In seven months, I helped over 20 companies adopt AI. I've watched them make the same mistakes, hit the same roadblocks, and also discover what actually works. And the difference between success and failure isn't the tool that they used. It came down to a set of core lessons. And most companies, they failed because they skipped the first one. Today, I'm sharing all of them. And we're starting with AI intuition. Let's get into it. So the biggest problem I see most companies have today is their inability to match up the right problem with the right AI. Because not every problem is can be solved by AI based off of its nature. And the best way I've found for a company to get better at doing this is through AI intuition. So this chart here gives you a depiction of what that looks like. So on the vertical axis, we have AI intuition. On the horizontal axis, we have exposure to AI. And the premise here is the more exposure you have to AI, the more AI intuition you build over time which in turn increases your chances of knowing which problem is most suitable for AI to solve. And I provide all my clients a simple framework of thinking about how to bucket different problems and figuring out if it's AI suitable or not today. And I set it on a spectrum. So this is the chaos spectrum that I provide to my clients. And on the chaos spectrum, we have different types of tasks that have more or less chaos. So on the left-hand side, we have order. And on the right-hand side, we have complete chaos. Now, the ones that are on the left-hand side that are completely orderly, the same thing happens every single time. It's almost identical. In that case, this doesn't need AI. What you can do is you can just have basic code or basic automations automate that for you. But where AI shines is where we're not too chaotic, but not too orderly. So it's somewhere in this sweet spot here where there is some chaotic elements of the process, but there are some parts of the process that are semi-similar. And so what are some practical examples that make up this AI sweet spot? Well, I want to show you three quick examples. So we'll start in our way left and go right. So on the left-hand side, we have meeting follow-ups. Now, a lot of us have recurring meetings on a weekly or daily basis, and we tend to have to send emails afterwards, and those emails are similar in nature. They may change by specific topics, but the structure is the same. The themes are somewhat in the same direction. So we can provide an AI a transcript, and it can automatically write those email follow-ups for us. That's a good example of something that's semi-chaotic, but not completely orderly. Now, our next example is PDF processing. So AI is very good at taking unstructured text and making it structured. So for example, you may have tons of proposals or manuals or, or contracts or whatever else, and you want to take that information, maybe even invoices, and put it into a piece of software. Well, you can use AI to extract the information from the PDF and put it in the software for you. That's, again, taking something that's somewhat chaotic not always the same every time. And then we can use AI to then put that into an orderly process for our software. And our final example here is document review. So again, this is something that AI is very good at. And a common use case I've seen people have success with is either proposals or contracts. So for the example of contracts, say you have a specific type of contract you're negotiating with somebody, AI is very good at extracting the information from that and pulling out exactly what you want to know if there's anything abnormal or not. And again, most of the contracts are somewhat similar but it can find the abnormalities between those contracts. Quick pause in your regular programming. This video is brought to you by me. So two quick things. First thing, Blow is a 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox for how you can apply AI to your business and your work. The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, Blow are a series of offerings to see if there's a good fit between the two of us. With that being said, let's get back into the video. Now our next lesson is being able to balance impact versus quick wins. Because often when I work with an organization that wants to adopt AI, they tend to list out a series of tasks that may be either easy with AI or very complicated with AI. It's important for us to know where they sit on how easy or hard it is to do and also the impact associated to your business. The best way I found to go about doing this in the core lesson is to map out what matters based off of your business goals. And this is the same process I walk all my clients through. So the very first thing we're always going to do is discuss what is the primary goal for your business in the next 12 months. Once we've gotten the goal, then you're gonna list out the bottlenecks between where you are today and where you wanna be in the future. And in the future is going to be that goal that we discussed. And after we listed out our bottlenecks, it's time to create an AI wish list. So an AI wish list is basically a series of tasks that you would like to automate with AI and or partially automate with AI. And this is something that's continuous. We're gonna continually add and remove things from this list as we have AI augment things and or automate them for us, as well as when we come up with new ideas, we can add those in there as well. And after we create our first round of our wish list, usually what I'll do with my client is I'll help them do two things. First, they rank it by impact, saying that if I automate said task, it's going to have a huge impact in, me ability, in my ability to get closer to the goal that I mentioned previously because we removed some bottlenecks out of the way. And after we've ranked the list, the next thing we wanna do is figure out what's going to be both difficult and a quick win. So what I'll do with the client on the first round is I'll identify on the list, we'll have a list of items. So we have a list of items here. 
of the list of items, I'll add an H or a Q next to each one of the items. So I'll add an H here, a Q here, an H here. And what these represent is H represents a highly difficult task to be automated with AI. And the next one is going to be a quick win with AI. And the reason I do this is because we need to balance, again, impact and quick wins. And the ratio that I recommend to my clients to have is a two to one ratio. And this two to one ratio is for every two tasks that we automate as a quick win, we then take on a task that's highly difficult. And we want to maintain this ratio over time because we want to build the company's confidence in their ability to use AI effectively, as well as make progress towards achieving their goals for the business. On to our next problem and core lesson which is one of the most fundamental pieces to a successful company being quote unquote AI first or AI native. And that's having very thorough documentation and clear processes. Without that, you really can't automate anything. And this is sadly an issue that I come into for a lot of different organizations where a process is in a variety of people's heads. No one person has the entire process in their head. And also it's somewhat vague and not documented on paper. So the very first thing we need to do is to document the process. And luckily AI can help us here. Now, this is the activity that I run all my clients through, which is a reverse AI interview to extrapolate that process if it's not already documented, which oftentimes it's not. So what we'll do is we'll start out with an AI interview. We'll have an AI take on a persona as a new employee being onboarded to take that process from you, or at least partially augment you within that process. So it'll ask you a series of questions as if it were a new employee. And those questions will be oriented completely around that process. And once the interview is complete, we're going to take this conversation, we're going to run it through another AI that's going to be an AI dedicated to creating SOPs. And it's going to be really good at creating simple to follow SOPs, which is important. And it's going to then generate an SOP from that conversation and the answers you provide to the questions. And once we have this, there's one of two things we can do. One is we can automate the process with the SOP we've created or augment it partially with AI. Or if the process hasn't been documented in the past, I think it's important before you do anything that's automated, is you run it manually first. And this is a specific lesson many companies have learned through the process is that you don't wanna automate a broken process and you don't know that it's broken until you've run somebody through the SOP. So once the SOP has been created, you're gonna pass this off to an employee that's either new and or hasn't done the process himself. You haven't run through the process multiple times to figure out what areas need to be tweaked and improved. Once that's been improved, then you can scale it through automation and or augmentation by AI. But before then, you don't wanna scale something that's broken. All right, so the next core lesson that many of my clients learn through the process of adopting AI is not to overcomplicate things. Often, we wanna to jump to level 10 when we're actually at level one. And there's tons of low hanging fruit between level one and 10 before we try to overcomplicate things and integrate AI into all of our processes. And how does this manifest? Well, the first thing I recommend all my clients do is get better at using the tools they already have access to. So if you have ChatGPT teams and all your employees have access to ChatGPT teams, Oftentimes, when I look at companies and how they use these tools, they're getting probably 15% of the value from those tools when they could get a lot more if they just knew how to use them more effectively and more consistently. So that's the first thing is upskilling your employees and using the basic tools because that is a massive value gain for an organization if they know how to use them correctly. So the remit here is to probably take at least 30 days to upskill your employees, consistently having them improve their ability to use these tools. And there's a variety of ways you can do this. I actually have a video dedicated just to that topic of how you can have your employees adopt AI more effectively. You can check it out here, but I will quickly share two tips from that video. So the first tip is sharing wins across the organization. So when you have different employees that have specific use cases that they found useful for AI, you should quickly and informally share these on a consistent basis, either in Slack or Teams or something else. The reason we're doing this is you're showing both what's possible with AI and then sparking ideas for others to then adapt that to their own use cases. The next thing here is going to be weekly office hours. So you probably have a series of employees inside of your company that are AI forward, meaning they use AI in their personal time. So they're excited about AI. You want to have them be your AI evangelists. They'll host informal office hours on a weekly basis where people get together and discuss different ideas around AI so they can share use cases across teams and also answer simple questions that they probably could provide guidance and assistance with for employees that don't necessarily know as much about these tools. And those are the two TLDRs, but like I said, you can watch that video to get more insights on that. Alrighty, so the next lesson here is for a client, oftentimes they lack having a baseline of how long it takes to do something. And this is critical to have so you can establish a return on investment for the time and energy put towards adopting AI effectively. And what do I mean by this? Well, oftentimes you have a manual process already. So for this manual process, this purple bar here, we wanna measure how long it takes us to do a task. So say this 100% bar, it takes us three hours to do a specific task. If I could write three hours, we'll do three hours. 
And then once we've figured out a way to effectively use AI and implement it into this process, we've shrank that time frame down from three hours to 40% of what three hours is. And we're not going to do that publicly because math is hard. So with this, we have a good understanding that we saved a lot of time. And this whole chunk of time that we saved here equates to the return on investment. But we won't know what this is unless we have a baseline. So we need to establish a baseline first. And the best way to do this for a specific task is easily just measure it out, see what the time is. But oftentimes there might be a vague or generalized task that you want all the employees to adopt AI. So in that case, if everybody's adopting AI and you can't sit down to measure the baseline for everything, you need to delegate that to your employees. And by doing that, you can say we should have a weekly reporting process where your employees will read back the ROI and the processes they've automated. So they need to first establish a baseline. And after they've established a baseline, they track the ROI from the time saved with AI, and they consistently feed that back to you on a weekly basis. So now into the next lesson that many companies run into. And this is employee buy-in. So there's probably, depending on the industry that you're in, some employees in your company that are either anti-AI or somewhat neutral to it. And this is likely due to the fact that they've interpreted us adopting AI as a potential threat to their job. And we need to change the wording around how we talk about things. And language matters here. So if you want to get those employees to buy into the process because they're not bought in, your adoption journey is going to be very friction-filled and hard to be successful in a short time frame. So what I found to be useful here is changing the way you talk about these tools and how you're going to adopt them over time. So the first thing is try to remove the term automation from your language, or at least if you do talk about it, you talk about it in the context of leverage, which we'll talk about in a second. So you're gonna replace automation as much as possible with augmentation. So when you talk to employees, say, hey, we're gonna use AI to augment you in your current job so you can then focus on more strategic tasks that will help us as a business holistically. In addition to this, you're also going to avoid talking about cutting jobs or having anybody talk about it within your organization. And instead, you're focusing on increasing leverage. So we're trying to do more with the same number of people. Instead of cutting jobs, we're trying to ramp up our profits and revenue, the number of clients we can serve from our company, while sustaining the number of employees that we have. Which doesn't mean you're going to have to do more work. It means you're going to have to be more effective with the time that you have and the tools you have access to. I know it's a simple and small thing, but trust me, this is very important. And on to our last lesson that many companies learn which is being able to play the field. Once you've gotten good at using a very specific tool, say ChatGPT, you don't necessarily need to stick with ChatGPT. Reason being is that once you've learned how to use a tool like that effectively, all the other tools have very similar features. The primary difference between the different AI providers is the model quality for specific tasks. So it's important that you start to adopt all of the tools over time. So you should use ChatGPT for certain tasks, Claude for certain tasks, Gemini for certain tasks, Grok for certain tasks, and other AI providers, because all of them are very good at specific things. And also as they come out with new models, we always want to be experimenting and testing these models. And this is the actual process I recommend my clients go through. So remember that AI wish list that we talked about earlier and how I said that it was a continuous type of list that you use on a reoccurring basis? Well, this is where the continuous piece of it comes into play. Because over time, you're going to be adding and removing items from this wish list. And the way you'll know to add and remove them is by experimenting with new models. Because every single provider comes out with new models. So here we have GPT-5. So maybe GPT-6 comes out or Cloud-5 comes out. And when those come out, you want to test your top priority tasks, saying if I automated and or partially automated or augmented this specific task with AI, it'll drastically improve my chances of achieving my business goal within the time frame I've set for myself. And the only way you'll know that is by testing and experimenting each one of these tasks on those new models. And once you've experimented with that specific model and you found that it's useful, then you can switch to that tool for that task. Not meaning you have to switch completely, but you're adding more and more tools and more and more AI providers to your tool belt. And those are the lessons. So as a quick recap, one of the most important things is building your AI intuition, being able to map a problem to AI, knowing that it's susceptible to being automated with AI. The next thing is knowing when you're going on this journey, you need to have a good ratio of a two to one of quick wins to impact. So you're sustaining your confidence as well as making progress. And again, the foundations are critical. So if you don't have your processes documented, you can't automate or augment anything. And finally, we need to be able to measure and iterate over time. So we need to have a strong baseline so we can derive what the ROI is for this investment of our time and resources towards AI. And then also we need to iterate and adding more and more tools to our tool belt over time. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this, please reshare it with your friends. As a reminder, two things. First thing, Blow's a 30-day AI insight series, completely free. You'll get 30 insights in your inbox of how you can apply AI to your business and your work. 
The second thing is if you'd like to work with me, blow her a series of offerings and see if there's a good fit between the two of us. With that being said, you should totally check out this next video that the YouTube gods knows that you'll love. See you next time, internet.